Hello and welcome back to Fun with Fitzy. Today's Chapter 6, Video 5, and we are looking still at inventory valuation methods. Uh, we're going to look at FIFO, first in, first out. And I introduced these, the topic of this in the last video, so you should understand uh, why we need to do this. If you forget, go back and watch Chapter 6, Video 4. Okay, FIFO stands for first in, first out. And it assumes that the earliest goods purchased, that means the ones we bought before the other ones, are the first to be sold. And again, remember, we're assuming that that's the case. It often reflects the actual physical flow of merchandise. So if you think about a grocery store where you go in and you buy the milk and they have them in that refrigerator and they put in the milk and they come to, here's the cartons of milk, and the door to the refrigerator is right here. And as a customer, you open this fridge and you take this one. That's the first one they purchased, and it's the first one that's going out. So the first in, first out. Uh, so if the store has their goods set up properly and on the shelves, then the actual physical flow of the merchandise should assume, um, match pretty well the cost, the cost flow through the company. So under FIFO, the cost of the earliest goods purchased are the first one to be recognized as cost of goods sold. So again, back to my example here, if this carton of milk, just for simplicity, costs $1, this one costs $2, and this one costs $3 to, for the store to purchase, we're assuming then that the first one out was $1. So that would turn into our cost of goods sold. So again here, the cost of the most recent goods purchased are recognized as the ending inventory. So the most recently purchased then would be these two and that would indicate then that the ending inventory was five dollars. When we're doing these cost um, inventory valuation methods we're looking at valuing our ending inventory valuing ending inventory and cost of goods sold because as you see here our cost of goods sold was one dollar in this case but if I had sold this one it would have been three dollars so it changes and this really could impact our income statement so again just as like a little picture here FIFO method assumes the earliest goods purchased are to be the first to be sold so um, they're saying that down here we have some inventory left and there's five thousand eight hundred left in the warehouse whereas these items were the first to be sold and that the cost of goods sold in this case was 6200 and you can see the price changes as you buy the different items so this was 1000 2200 this was 3600 they didn't sell them all here and so on so the price usually goes up as you know with inflation okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at an example and um, hopefully you can copy this down or I've given you the blank worksheet that you can do with this video so Axman Shoes here is a company and they sell women's shoes and they purchase shoes periodically again remember we're studying the periodic inventory system okay so we need to be able to value our inventory in order to figure out what our ending inventory and our cost of goods sold is. Okay, so they purchase shoes periodically and they sell shoes daily. And the following is a chart showing inventory purchases, inventory quantities, and sales for the year. So let's just uh, go down here, if I can grab my little bar. So here's a table and this is what I'm going to highly recommend that you guys do. Uh, basically, if you're not given the information, I recommend you put it in table form. So here's the number of units. So on January 1st, this company had 100 units as their beginning inventory. So this is beginning inventory. As you know, we need that for our cost of goods sold formula. And the cost of these units were $4 each. So the total cost in this case is $400. And then on July 1st, they purchased 50 units more. And these 50 units cost $8 each. So the cost of our inventory on that purchase is $400 as well. But as you know, we only have half as much. 
the price seems to be going up here as time goes on. On October 1st also, we then purchased 50 more, but the price was now $14. So the cost of that inventory purchase was $700. And then on December 1st, we purchased 50 more, and they were $20 each, so it's $1,000. Now, if you add up all of the inventory we have, you're going to have $2,500 worth of inventory. And this would be our cost of goods available for sale. Here we have our beginning inventory. These are all of our purchases. And as you know, beginning inventory plus net purchases is cost of goods available for sale. Okay, so always complete the chart when you're given this, this type of information. It's going to help you do the math. Now, what I want to do next is using that chart, here are some questions. Okay, as you know, we're looking at FIFO. So what I want to do is I want to look at this question that we have here. Calculate the cost of ending inventory using the FIFO method, assuming 60 units were left in inventory. Okay, so we have this chart that we've built here. And we're going to assume that we have 60 units left in inventory. So what we need to do is calculate the cost of goods sold and our ending inventory. So let's start with calculating our cost of goods sold. So let's write this down. So if we look at our table, if we have 60 units left, and okay, under the FIFO method, we know that the first inventory in is the first inventory out. So these 100 are gone, these 50 are gone, and we only have 10 of these left. And of course, we have all 50 of these left. So first in, first out means um, the ones that we have left, that these 60 units are the last ones we purchased. So I need to find 60 units that we have left. So I'm going to take the 50 we have from the December 1st purchase, and they were $20 each, which means I have $1,000 there. And I'm going to take 10 of these because I need to get 60. 10 from the October 1st purchase, and they were $14. So that leaves me with $140 worth of that inventory. So here's my 60 that I have left. 50 plus 10 equals 60. And I'm making sure that the most recently ones purchased are the ones I have left. Because under FIFO, the first in are the first ones sold. Okay, so this indicates to me then that we have $1,140 worth of inventory. So this is our ending inventory. We just calculate our ending inventory. And we know that if we had 2000 our cost of goods available for sale was $2,500. I got that from here. We had that many available for sale, and now we have 1140 left. That leaves us with 1360 worth of inventory sold. So that was the cost of goods sold. Hi, baby. Hi. I'm guessing you're making a video. I'm making a video. <laughs> Did I interrupt? Mm -hmm. Sorry. And it's recording everything we're saying right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, so that anyway. I'll okay. delete that. Okay. So remember when doing these types of calculations, usually we're asked to figure out what our cost of goods sold is and what our ending inventory is. So in this particular case, our cost of goods sold is 1360 and our ending inventory is 1140. Okay, so that was our little demonstration of the FIFO method. So by now you should be able to value inventory using the FIFO method, first in, first out. 
You should be able to calculate any inventory and cost of goods sold using that method. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped.